Good boy, how are you? Good evening, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present please respect the instructions given by our ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19 
including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times in the church. We will not have a collection at this mass, but there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrance and exit of the church. Your donations pay for the utilities and salaries of the parish. Thank you for supporting our Basilica Parish. At the time of communion, we will give you further instructions, and at the end of Mass, we ask you to follow the ushers' directions for leaving from the church. Our gathering chant is number 303 in the Catholic Book of Worship, Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Morn. For those in the church here, you can find the words to all of the hymns on the bulletin you were given on your way in. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch. Please stand. and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends in Christ, on this fourth and final Sunday of Advent, we recall the fullness of time when the Son of God became human, conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. We remember Mary's joyful acceptance of God's plan. In her yes to God, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. As we light all four candles on the Advent wreath, let us join Mary as willing servants of the Lord. May our yes welcome Christ into our world. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. God of mercy on us, forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever.
a reading from the book of the prophet Micah. The Lord says to his people, you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judea, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The refrain for the psalm is, Restore us, O God, let your face shine that we may be saved. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book, see God, I have come to do your will, O God. When Christ said, you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, see, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. With Christmas just around the corner, the days of Advent waiting are almost over, and on this fourth Sunday, the scripture readings are alive with excitement about the Savior who is coming very soon. The first reading from the book of the prophet Micah happened during the 8th century BC when the Jewish people were in exile, and he gives an assurance to the Jewish people that God is faithful to his promises, and that from the unimportant and insignificant village of Bethlehem, he will send them the long-expected Messiah, ruler. And the second reading encourages us to 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 be thankful to Christ who offered the sacrifice of perfect obedience that liberated us from sin. He accepted death on the cross, and this sacrifice replaced all other sacrifices of the Jewish law when he brought reconciliation between God and his people. And in the Gospel today, it's no surprise that the spotlight of the Gospel is focused on Mary because... No one can help us understand the meaning of Christmas better than Mary. The visitation to her cousin Elizabeth is more than a happy exchange of support between two women sharing the joys of childbearing. It is a story of faith as well as friendship and human love. Elizabeth clearly recognizes that Mary is carrying Jesus, the image of the unseen God, when she says, why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? What a warm welcome the unborn Christ child received at Elizabeth's home in contrast to the cool welcome he would receive in Bethlehem when there was no room for them in the inn. Mary reveals in living color how all Christians are to await Christ. She was carrying him as a gift to the world, to a world in need, and we are to do the same. We are signs of the presence of Christ when we give ourselves to others as a gift to others, And what better time than at Christmas when we meet family and friends with warmth and hospitality, even in the midst of this COVID pandemic. We should never forget the humble origins of Jesus born into a world of pain and sorrow in a stable at the very bottom rung of the social ladder. All of our celebrations, you know, are an empty sham if Christ is not born into our hearts. Good deeds need to be done at a deeper level out of love and affection and a spirit of generosity. The gifts that we give have no purpose unless God is part of the giving, and unless we make Christmas a pattern to be followed every single day of our lives. Like Mary, we are all invited into our own lives to, be, to do the will of God. Perhaps this year a neighbor or an old friend has to spend Christmas in hospital, away from the security of family. It could be someone who is elderly, The pandemic has taken its toll, and the Lord has called, or the Lord may have called someone home 
leaving a vacant chair by the fireside in a family down the road. A visit made, a phone call or a visit made there in the spirit of Mary to Elizabeth will be always be appreciated and will bring loving warmth and badly needed company. It's one way of offering the perfect Christmas gift of saying to God as Mary did, here I am Lord, I've come to do your will. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ our Savior, we ask God our Father to make our hearts a worthy dwelling place as Mary did, as we offer our prayers of intercession today. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for Peter, our Archbishop, that they may have the strength and courage to continue to lead and guide the people of God along Christ's path of justice, love, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Archdiocese, as we journey through the process of renewal and restructuring, that we may face the coming challenges and the changes with hope and courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we pray and dialogue together in preparation for the Synod of Bishops, we pray for a spirit of openness to the working of the Holy Spirit among us in the discernment process. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who work for justice and peace, for those who work to feed the hungry and clothe and shelter the homeless, that they may be given courage and strength in their ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray that the coming feast of Christmas may fill all families with a spirit of peace and hospitality, and that we may reach out to those who are poor, lonely, and in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, we pray for all the scientists and medical professionals who are trying to rid the world of this virus, and we pray for all the sick, especially Barbara Mercer, who was in hospital in, in Hamilton, Ontario, that the healing power of the Holy Spirit may be upon all the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, for Brenda Critch, Arch Spencer, Maureen Kelly, that they may enjoy the peace and joy of the kingdom of God. And we pray for all who mourn the death of loved ones, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the prayers in the quiet of your hearts today, All-powerful Father, giver of the breath of life, prepare our hearts so that, like Mary, they may be worthy dwelling places for your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for all and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, and as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God, Full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming again of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, power, and the glory are yours. yours Lord Jesus Christ, has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always we share the peace of Christ now with one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, for you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion, bow towards the host, in silence receive the host in your hands, step aside to consume the host, and return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ.
Uh, just a few announcements from our bulletin today. Um, please pick up, I'm sure you have a copy. Um, the, since our last, this last week, we've had more issues happening with the virus again around Christmas. So uh, right now we've had to restrict numbers again. Uh, we, we cannot have really 50% in the church uh, unless we, because we have to, even with the Vax Pass, you still have to to social distance. So the masses for five o'clock at Christmas Eve and nine o'clock are filled now. Um, there are some available seats for midnight, 12, and some for nine and 11. Not many left nine in the morning, there's some, and for 11 o'clock on Christmas Day. So uh, if you, the way it is now at Christmas, if you don't register and your name is on the list, you won't get in. I'm sorry, you'll be like, 
Jesus and like Mary and Joseph at the uh, at the inn. There'll be no room, unfortunately, if you don't register. So I'd ask you to make sure you're registered for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day Masses because we can't have people coming in at the door. We don't have the room, especially with the new restrictions coming out pretty well every day. And God knows what will happen this week, right? So please make sure that, uh, that you do that uh, as well. Um, uh, today we're going to, because of the COVID and stuff like that, we're going to try to be very, very careful. And please, the, the ushers will dismiss you at the end. We, the people at the back will go out through the main doors and the people here in the front go to the side doors and wait until the ushers dismiss you. I know it sounds like school and every class and row goes, but they will direct you out as best you can. We're trying to uh, organize people so we're not, we're not close to, to one another. Unfortunately, that's the reality. Also at the end after Mass, there are some uh, ornaments for sale down there. John is down there with the Basilica Heritage Foundation and certainly you can do that. Right. So I do have a letter from the Archbishop, an update from the Archbishop, and I'd like for you to please listen to that. It says, Dear people of the Archdiocese of St. John's, over the past year since the legal decision became final that the Archdiocese was vicariously liable for the claims of the abuse at the Mount Cashel Orphanage in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, we have been working hard to determine how best to resolve these claims while also ensuring the ongoing practice and celebration of our Catholic faith. This work has included financial analysis, consultation with parishes, consultation with victims' councils, parishioner feedback, research and planning, real estate appraisals, and a review of current operations. As a next step in the process of resolving these claims, the archdiocese may be forced to file for creditor protection under the Bankruptcy and Insolvency Act. This action, if pursued, is intended to provide the archdiocese with additional time to complete the evaluation of our assets, formally call for claims against the archdiocese, and develop a proposal for our creditors to settle victims' claims and creditor liabilities. The cash reserves of the parishes and the archdiocese will be dedicated to meeting our financial obligation to our creditors. There will be a reallocation of available funds between parish accounts to assist and support all of the parishes within the diocese. Each parish will be provided with a set amount of operating capital. The opening cash combined with the com continuing contribution of parishioners will be available to pay parish operating expenses such as heat light phone, salaries, repairs, and maintenance. The ability of parishes to be financially self-sufficient will be a major factor in determining their ongoing viability and the overall success of the archdiocese to, to develop an acceptable proposal to its creditors. It is important to note that while the intention is to maintain all parish operations in the immediate term, there will be a need to market many dioceses, diocesan and parish properties, including church buildings. As marketing plans are developed and parish restructuring arrangements are finalized, we will continue to provide you, the parishioners, with timely updates. We intend to work with parish clergy, lay staff, and parish pastoral and financial council members to provide pastoral ministry and have the sacraments continue to be available for all members of the archdiocese. I am truly sorry to, have, to be having to announce this type of news to you at this time of the year. However, if we can accept this present situation together as a diocesan community, with trust in one another and in God's goodness, I firmly believe that we can bring, he, help bring healing to the victims and their loved ones and to the entire faith community and bring closure to a dark chapter in the history of our archdiocese. It is my intention to meet with as many parishes and groups as I can in coming weeks to further explain our situation and to respond to your questions and concerns. It is my hope that together we will find creative ways to meet our financial commitments and to promote our pastoral ministry into the future. With prayers for God's blessings upon you, your loved ones, and all members of our Archdiocesan family during the upcoming Christmas season, and always I remain sincerely yours in Christ, Peter Hunt, Archbishop of St. John's. And let us pray.
Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your may Almighty God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives and continue to pray for us all. Thank you. Our missioning hymn can be found on the back of your bulletin or page 462 in the Catholic Book of Worship, I Sing a Maid. Oh, mm -hmm. 